What's up, YouTube? It's Jermaine with another video, another San Francisco series video. And in this video, I'm going to go over um, hacker houses and as well as uh, communal living. Because these are definitely popping up all over Craigslist. If you go to Craigslist and look for, you know, a room in a house, you may see hacker house pop up or you may see communal house pop up. And it's just a really big trend that's spreading um, in San Francisco as well as Oakland too. Um, I noticed there's like quite a few of communal houses in Oakland. And pretty much how communal houses and hacker houses work, they work very similar to hostels, but people just stay there longer. So I start off with communal housing. So communal housing is pretty much a house where, you know, you may have five bedrooms and each bedroom is rented out to a person, right? And then you guys all share the kitchen, you share the living room. It's just like a house with roommates. But in some communal housing, they do stuff a little bit different unlike a traditional house with roommates. Like you guys may do, um, you may do certain events together or um, you guys may have a schedule where you, 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 you may like study or it may be a, a certain time where every month you guys go do, go fishing or go hiking or et cetera. Okay. Now with hacker housing, now that's communal housing with hacker housing, it's a little bit different. Hacker, hacker housing is almost like living in a hostel. Okay. But living in a hostel full time. So if you don't know what a hostel is, a hostel are basically, it's almost like a hotel, but it's cheaper than a hotel because they put four people or five people or six people in one room and they rent out the rooms by the beds, you know? So you have bed A and it costs $20 a night instead of, you know, renting a hotel room, which costs $90 a night. So you could save money like staying in a hostel. So hacker housing is, like I say, it's just like staying in a hostel. But the big difference with hacker housing I see is a lot of hacker housing comes with a lot of cool amenities, like stuff that, um, food, coffee, tea. Um, usually hacker houses don't just come with internet. They come with ultra high speed internet. Um, a lot of hacker houses I've noticed in the city you don't have to clean. Like, if you move in, you don't have to clean. Um, there's one hacker house in the city that I checked out. Man, 60 people live there. 60 people. It's literally like living in a hostel full-time. And this hacker house is like, it's a tech-oriented hacker house. So, a lot, majority of the people there are working in tech. And also, when I say the name hacker house, that that pretty much means that the people living there are, they probably have something to do with tech. Okay. Um, the whole term hacker. So, but back to that other, um, communal house that I look, lived at, look, looked at is it, it was a communal house slash hacker house, but basically 60 people live there. And I think it was like 30 rooms and two people shared like one room. Now, this hacker house was pretty dang expensive. It was $1,250 a month to share a room with someone else. Um, now, one thing, other amenities about the house, there are multiple bathrooms, okay? Um, it's a large kitchen. It was a really large living room area. I mean, you could stick maybe 30 people in the living room. I mean, benefits of living in a house like that one, I would see, let's say you just moved to the city and you're, you're single, you don't have a lot of stuff and you don't know anyone. Living in a place like that, you would get to know people really fast. Um, you could probably make some pretty awesome connections quick. Um, you could even find a job quick. Just because, I mean, living with 60 people, like, you're just bound to talk to someone who knows someone else. And, yeah, a house like that, I would say you have a really good ratio, especially if, like, especially if you're not from the city. Um, I mean, is that for everyone? No. 
Um, hacker housing and communal housing is definitely not for everyone. Um, if you're the type of person that you have a lot of stuff or you're the type of person that, you know, you have a massive wardrobe or you have 30 pairs of shoes, this may not be the the housing situation for you. You may want to just go on Craigslist and look for, you know, a room in a house or a room in an apartment or just some other form of living. But communal living may not work. But if you're the type that, you know, you don't have a lot of stuff and you're not you don't really spend a lot of time at home yeah communal living could could possibly work now you don't have to pay twelve hundred and fifty dollars um there's definitely places online for much cheaper than that but that place was that place cost a lot because it was really popular and it was more the location i mean if you live there you could pretty much walk everywhere i mean the location is key um yeah, but communal housing is taken off. Now, in, in Oakland, in the East Bay, it's definitely, I want to say it's a little bit better because houses have backyards, houses are bigger, um, you know, it's more room, less people share rooms. Like here, a lot of the communal housing in Oakland, um, you know, you would just get your own room. Unlike the city where it's it costs $1,200 to share a room. Yes, yeah, so you definitely get more bang for your buck in Oakland, but Oakland's just, you know, farther away from the city and you have to commute and all. So, you know, I would just I would just say aim for a place in the city because the time that you spend commuting and the time that you spend, you know, getting from your house to the BART station, you know, that's a lot of valuable time that you could be, you know, doing something else with. But I would say, like, you know, Definitely, like, look in other parts of the city. SOMO is going to be very expensive. Um, Mission District, there are quite a few hacker houses in the Mission District that are pretty dang reasonably priced. Um, so the Mission is a cool place to look. And the Mission's pretty big, too. So there's tons of places. And there's also communal housing, a, a lot of communal housing in the Mission and the Mission District, I would say, is one of the best places to do all the communal living because it's flat, okay? You can easily ride a bike. Um, you know, you can. it's easy to walk places if you don't have a bike. Um, there's public transportation in the Mission that's pretty decent. Like, if you live anywhere close to Mission Street, you can take the BART, but then there's also tons of buses around. Um, Soma would be the most ideal neighborhood, Yet, Somo is a little bit more densely populated. It's a lot harder to park a car. If you do have a car, it's a lot harder to park in Somo. And, um, you know, you really don't need to go that far in Somo because everything is in Somo or close to Somo. One thing about hacker houses, since they are, um, like, two-bedroom or three-bedroom apartments converted into a hostel, a lot of them are in pretty cool buildings. So if you pick a, ha a hacker house that's in a pretty cool building, you can enjoy all the amenities like, you know, the pool. Some have barbecue areas, fitness centers, um, study rooms, rooftop terrace. So that's another benefit to a hacker house. Um, you know, you may not necessarily be a person that just stay at home all day, but you can just hang out like around the building and you can do stuff like that. And communal living and hacker ho hacker hostels are really great for people who, like, just moved to a city and, you know, you want to look for another apartment and you need a place for three weeks or you are getting ready to move out of town, you know, in two months. So you move out of your apartment two weeks early and you need a place to crash for two more weeks. So you can definitely make them work. Um, and I mean, you don't have to, you know, take the whole hacker house alternative or commuter, com commuter, <laughs> gosh, I can't say it. You, you guys know what I'm trying to say, but you don't have to take the whole communal living route either. Um, other ways, if you don't want to pay high costs of rent, maybe I'll make another video, but you know, there is a Google employee that lived in his van and I actually know people in Oakland that live in cars and vans too. And 
you know, they actually live somewhat normal lives, believe it or not. And maybe if they never told me that they lived in a van, I would never know. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll make a video talking about that or, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll just cut the video off there. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Another San Francisco series. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this from me, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. Peace.